Greg, I want you to define for this America, for those listening coast to coast, the modern phrase law and order. It's not Richard Nixon's law and order. It's not George Wallace's law and order. It's not even LBJ's law and order. What does law and order mean in this 2020? Well, what it should mean is an effective uh, law enforcement that is constitutionally based and is community engaged and uh, is is very different from some of the examples that we've seen uh, recently that have caused this protest activity. This is, to be sure, a, a um, these are exceptions to the rule. These these exceptions involving excessive force and um, and unnecessary violence on the part of law enforcement. It is not, uh, those incidents do not reflect law enforcement generally, uh, but clearly there are enough examples of such, uh, uh, such conduct that it, it needs to be addressed in a way that it has not been addressed thus far. And we're seeing some high profile recent incidents uh, causing the kind of social unrest and protest activity that we've uh, experienced over the weekend. And so clearly it's a problem. It's a, it's a serious issue and it has to be addressed. Well, Greg, let's talk about it, because I know this is something you've given a lot of thought to. How do we more effectively police the police? How do we do that, Greg? <clears throat> well, there has to be um, effective training, obviously. Uh, clearly, recent examples tell us that the training has to be improved. It has to be better. It has to be more comprehensive uh, in large departments and small police departments around the country. There also has to be uh, more effective oversight, apparently, when incidents uh, like the one we saw uh, over um, uh, last week in uh, Minneapolis uh, happen. There has to be uh, there has to be robust investigative activity. There has to be robust oversight, and there has to be accountability. I think one thing that uh, that can can happen is that the federal uh, Department of Justice can, uh, in the form of the the DOJ Office of Inspector General can perhaps play a bigger role in overseeing the way that that DOJ grant money is spent by local departments, the way training is done. Um, but there really obviously has to be a much more effective training and oversight and, and accountability. Those are the three things that I would focus on. Greg, just real quick here, what's your sense of how close we are to truly spiraling out of control where we're going to need a heavier military response? Well, this is a very alarming situation, to say the least. We have now more than half of our states uh, that have imposed curfews and have deployed the National Guard. This is the most significant such effort uh, in our country since, since 1968. Uh, and so uh, it's it's... The, the violence that is going on, you know, we have a we have a sort of a combination here of legitimate protest activity for um, for yeah. obvious reasons, but we also have a lot of opportunistic, mindless violence, graffiti, uh, attacks on the media, et cetera, and that that obviously is not uh, uh, tolerable, and and so uh, it's a very very challenging situation for our political leaders at the federal, state, and local level right now, to be sure.